I am really excited to introduce uh, our next speaker. Um, if you have been into uh, in Virginia Connect in the, in the other room, which I know you have, and seen that lovely skyscraper that's sitting there, uh, that is the product uh, plugged into the microgrid and uh, running off of renewable power, at least in, right in here. Um, that's, a, that's a product, uh, it's a demonstration of the product from VIEW, which I think is not only one of the more exciting companies that, that uh, I've seen out there, and, and last week at uh, Green Build in New Orleans was sort of the bell of the ball, but really exemplifies what we're doing at Verge, how the built environment and IT come together, uh, where intelligence is I I integrated into building products and therefore you know, making, uh, saving energy, making our lives better, and it's, it's, it's really very exciting. So uh, I'm really pleased to introduce the CEO of VIEW. Please join me in welcoming Rao Mopuri. Rao? Thanks, Joel. For centuries, art looked like this, iconic, but flat, and not really representational of what we look like. And then in the 14th century, we started to see art like this. Not us, I guess the people that were there in the 14th century. Um, vivid, full of color. You can see the facial expressions a lot more clearly. You can see the muscles and all the things around them with much more clarity. Then you start to wonder, what caused that to happen? Was that because of the advent of oil painting? Was it? Uh, linear perspective techniques? Was it the people commissioning this art? Were they somehow demanding a lot more than people did in the past? But when you look into this, you in fact find that it's something far simpler than that. Eyeglasses. The artists were able to see a lot more clearly what they were doing. So what can we take away from that? People were able to then start to see things clearly. People were able to represent things a lot more truthfully. They were able to allow creativity to flourish a lot more than it used to be before this invention was possible. In other words, a piece of technology not only enabled productivity and well-being, but it really enabled a major amount of progress to happen. Let's take another example. Christoph Huygens came up with the pendulum clock. He took the cues from Galileo on the pendulum. Until this invention in the 17th century, you could only tell time within about a 15 minute interval. Can you imagine the world where people were off by 15 minutes? Well, I guess Indian standard time sometimes is off by 15 minutes. Um, but this single invention made time possible to within 15 seconds of accuracy. That brought on a whole range of possibilities in the Industrial Revolution. You were now able to have transportation that was a lot more aligned you were able to have scientific inventions that otherwise wouldn't have been possible. In other words, a completely new way of being able to do things that weren't possible before this simple invention. You were able to wake up the things that were all around you that were dormant, that people took for granted, that people have accepted. You know, 15 minutes of accuracy was acceptable, but the moment 15 seconds of accuracy was possible, 15 minutes was no longer acceptable. Let's take another example. Alexander Graham Bell came up with the telephone. And for decades, we had to be tethered to a wire to be able to communicate with other people. And we accepted that until the mid-80s when we were able to start to communicate while moving around. We were able to be driving and still be able to communicate. So a big change in the way we were able to communicate. And that brought on the ability, combined with computing now, to be able to use the telephone as a computer. We're able to use it as a GPS device. We're able to use it to monitor ourselves, in this case, a heart rate monitor. So a number of possibilities have come about with, again, waking up an object that was used for a limited purpose. And by adding functionality, we were able to get a lot more out of it. And today, we can't imagine our lives without this device. So our company looked at the window. Windows are very essential for our well-being. And glass, you know, as a material scientist, I find glass as a fascinating and magical material. 
we're able to keep ourselves disconnected from the outside in terms of wind and the elements, but we're able to stay connected in terms of views and natural light. And natural light and views have been shown to be good for our well-being. But as the objects around us continue to change, the window remains largely the same. While window brings about all these benefits, and we've learned to build with bigger and bigger windows because, again, we really understand the value of this to us as human beings, we've also been living with certain limitations. So let me talk about the more wide, most widespread thing we have in use that allows us to control glare and heat, which are the two things that come across the window uh, that we find challenging. So you pull a cord, some 50 or so blades drop down, um, and then you twist a rod to be able to control the amount of light that comes in. You can have light or no light. You can have view or no view. And then if you want to put these back up, you have to pull on a cord. And by the way, you've got to pull it vertically, but also a little bit horizontally. Okay, make sure you get it right, or else you may be fiddling with it for a while. Um, and in so doing, you lost the view and the light, but importantly, the heat is still in the room. I'm sorry about that, you can't really control the heat. So at VIEW, our engineers and scientists and you know, manufacturing people came up with a technique to be able to control the window just the way you need it, while being able to take advantage of all of those things that are important for our wellness. We can track the location, the angle of the sun, the cloud cover relative to each window and be able to individualize the performance of that window such that you're able to control heat and glare. So you're now able to maintain the view and the light all the time without being disconnected. In other words, we focused on keeping humans at the center of the window experience. If you can do that, and I know we're talking about sustainability here, you save about 20% of lighting and HVAC energy. Importantly, you save about 25% of HVAC peak load. HVAC peak load is very important because cooling peak is same as grid peak. It has massive benefits at the grid level, but at the building level, we can massively simplify the systems that are used to cool the building. But the benefit is actually far bigger than that. If you can create a space with more natural light, studies have shown people recover faster. Students are able to learn in a better learning environment with views and natural light. Employees are a lot more productive in a work environment. Let's put that in perspective, the employee aspect of it. If you're a company based here in the Bay Area, the amount of money you spend for energy per year per square foot of the building surface is about $8. $8 a year per square foot in energy costs. But then you spend $80 a square foot per year in rent. 10x the cost of energy in the rent you spend here in the Bay Area. But the much bigger piece is you spend $800 per square foot per year in people, in salaries and benefits. Remember we talked about wellness being important. So sustainability isn't just about reducing energy consumption, improving efficiency, recyclability of materials. It has to be about the people. And in other words, we have to focus on the quality of the people hours that are spent inside that building. And the products and services that we're developing today and the sustainability focus areas that we have have to be about the well-being of the people inside the building in order to make a big difference to the business or to the people that we're serving. And a number of technologies are being brought to bear in order to move the needle forward. If you want to be future ready, you have to be uh, creating sustainability trends that put the humans at the center of the equation. In photography, there's what's called a golden hour, where the amount of light is just right for that one hour in a day, where you're able to get just the vivid colors, just the right amount of soft light. If you use technology to be able to address the equivalent of the golden hour for sustainability, we should be able to make every hour in the building the golden hour. And that's exactly what we're attempting to do at VIEW. 
And if you put people in the middle of the sustainability movement, and you make it not just about the energy or the resources, but about creating spaces that are fundamentally valuable for the people that are in the building, I would argue you're able to future ready uh, the building for where the world is headed. You've heard the story of the eyeglasses fundamentally waking up what people are able to do with art. You heard the story of the pendulum and how it's woken up you know, the ability to keep time. You certainly are experiencing the story of mobility and how that's impacting our lives. We are waking up the window. What will you wake up next? Thank you.